Now we're ready to define our materials and map our model. In case your picture frame doesn't look much like my picture frame while you're working on it, this might be the secret. I have ambient occlusion turned on. See what happens when you turn it off? It's a good thing to have it on. At least I love it. We're going to go to edit mode. And we're going to define the center of the panel here where our picture is going to go and give it a material. So be sure and click on the material button here. Then we're going to go add new and I'm going to call it photo. And I'm going to assign that material. Now I'm going to hit control and I which selects the inverse of what you have just mapped and I'm going to make a new material and call it frame and assign that. You can select and deselect your materials over here by going deselect, make sure you've got frame on, select, deselect, photo, select, deselect, so you can check on your materials and see if they're applied correctly. Now we're going to map our photo frame. Right clicking in the middle of the photo frame, one on the keypad to make sure you're really looking at it from the front view. And we're going to go to U with the U key. And this time we're going to do project from view and bounds. Now that looks a lot like what we did with our crate. What it does is make sure that whatever texture that you put on in this area when you get it in world is going to fill the whole frame there. If you had a tall skinny texture and you put it in then it would look a little weird and if you had a short fat landscape picture, it would look a little weird too. So this frame is designed for a square photo. It would take a 512 square texture. The next thing we want to do is um, map the rest of the frame. This is a lot more complex than the cube, of course, so there's an extra step that we need to do. Mapping can get very complicated and this is one of the easiest ways that you can do mapping. So we'll start out with the easiest. What a great idea. I'm going to select the frame and deselect the photo. So now we only have the frame selected. And I'm going to go over here to shading and UVs which normally you wouldn't see You'd have to find it down here. Click on that and we're going to mark all the seams. So what's happened is that every single seam has been marked and this will divide the whole model into a lot of little puzzle pieces and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to, we're going to select the uh, frame again because we've already mapped the center part. We're going to select the frame and then we're going to unwrap it. Just using the unwrap. This isn't going to work because the proportions are all wrong. So let's see if we can fix that. And of course there's an easy way to do it. Back in object mode, go to object, apply, rotation and scale. That's all we have to do. Now we're going back into edit mode. Make sure that we have frame selected. Hit the U key and unwrap. There! That looks much better. 
there are going to be some problems there almost always are when you're using wood grain because when you unwrap everything's not in the same direction so these pieces here will not be the same wood grain as these pieces here because they're going in different directions so we have to fix that in order to be able to see how to fix that the easiest way is to add our wood grain so that we can see it in this panel and I'm going to add texture image texture okay and then I'm going to get my texture. This little button here displays the files in the directory as thumbnails, which is a much better way, I think, of finding things. Now, in order to get our texture to show up, we have two things we have to do. We have to connect these two yellow dots and we have to go up here and we have to say material. Now we can see that it's wood grain. And we can see that the proportions are much better than they were before, right? We do have some problems because the wood grain on a frame would not be going in this direction, but we can fix that pretty easily. So I'm gonna right click on one of these areas, hold down the shift key, right click on another see they highlighted over here on this side we have a couple more places that are going to be problematic right there right there right there right there those are all the things that are going in the wrong direction so i'm going over here to this pane i'm going to click on that and i'm going to go r for rotate on the keyboard R, X, that's the direction, 90, that's how many degrees. And then I'm going to left click. The G key will move these out of the way. Now our job is to move things around so that everything will fit within this texture plane and still go in the same location. We can move one piece at a time. We can do anything that we want to. It's very much like a puzzle, but it's pretty obvious by looking here that not everything is going to fit as it is now. So we're going to have to make things a little bit smaller. In order to do that, an easy way is to hold down the B key for box select, highlight everything, and then the S key will make things smaller. I'm going to move a few things around and then I will be back. This is the pattern that I came up with. Yours may be different and work just as well. That's not too important. If you click on one of these pieces, you can use the G key and grab it and move it around. That's how I move things around. You can leave a little buffer area around these if you want to it's not necessary and next time we'll learn how to work with the nodes some more to make baked textures and get our texture into second life so that we can put it on our model